Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to a very special edition of Earth Juice. That's right, they finally let me out of the studio. Behind me is San Diego and we've been here in America making a series of films about the amazing American wildlife. So keep an eye out for those on Earth Unplugged. Meanwhile, in this week's news, thousands of sharks, radioactive fish, sex on the beach. <laughs> In scenes reminiscent of the movie Jaws, swimmers have been told to keep out of the water in Florida, but not because of one, but thousands of sharks. Researchers from Florida's Atlantic University counted as many as 15,000 sharks heading north on their annual migration. Most of the sharks were black tips or spinners, but hammerheads, lemons, tigers and bull sharks were also spotted. Lifeguard supervisor Craig Pollock said that the water was thick with sharks. Thankfully for the locals, the sharks have now migrated further north and the beaches were reopened just in time for spring break. When Japan's Fukushima nuclear reactor was hit by a tsunami in 2011, the spawning grounds of the bluefin tuna were flooded with radiation. And now scientists have found traces of radioactive material turning up in the tuna caught just here off the California coast. But before you drop your sushi, don't worry. The tiny amount of radiation that's been found in the fish is of no danger to them or us humans. Bluefin tuna are notoriously hard to track, but Stanford University graduate Dan Madigan took samples from fish found here in California, and he discovered traces of a radioactive isotope called cesium-134, which is only found in radiation from Fukushima, all of which proves that these fish had traveled from Japan. By isolating the cesium, scientists can figure out which fish came from where and when they chose to migrate, helping them to monitor the populations, which could ultimately lead to sustainable bluefin tuna fishing and aid in the conservation of the species. And finally, a very special event is due to happen right here on this beach in San Diego tonight. So I'm going to come back later to meet Melissa Studer, a grunion greeter, to find out what it's all about. So, Melissa, what is going on here? What is, what is this extraordinary thing we're seeing? What's happening? Well, this is a grunion run. And the joke is it's called a grunion run because when the waves come, we'll be running <laughs> for dry sand. But what they're doing is they're actually riding the waves in to come up completely out of the water to spawn, to reproduce. These eggs out in the sea would face all kinds of predation. The survival rate would be quite low, like in the case of other fish. Here, they're buried, they're underneath the surface of the sand, it actually increases their survival rate. How big does this get? How, how covered would this beach be in a kind of peak? Run? There could be thousands and thousands of these fish all over this beach, to the point where as far up and down the beach that you can look, there could be fish, and you can barely walk without stepping on them. So this, is, this for them is a survival strategy, actually. This yes. Is, this is what makes them a successful species. Yes. So that's this week's Earth Juice. Subscribe to see more videos from our American trip and I'll see you next week when I'll be back in my green screen studio. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy my freedom. My grandfather taught me to dive. It was a five minute lesson. I was almost nine years old off the coast of Monaco and it happened in such a natural way that it, I think it just became integrated in me. And I think that stayed with me. I think it's nurturing, it's a meditative place, it's restorative.